Hi, welcome to Taste This TV. I'm Chef Joe Seminera. Today is the show. That's right. If you love barbecue, we're here in Texas, Dallas, Texas, to be exact, where we're going to be whipping up things like spare ribs, chicken breasts, and all kinds of wonderful creations with a signature touch on Texas. So if you like barbecue, this is the show. Don't go anywhere. Taste this. So I'm here with Shirley Bailey, old friend here of Taste This TV. You've been with us for a long time, Shirley. Hi, always a pleasure. Now, I mean, tamales, talking about chili. I come see Shirley. What That's, do you got going on here? Joe, we've got a new flavor. New, mm. new to you since the last time I saw you. We've got a pork tamale. Really? So now we have five flavors of our gourmet tamale, and they're all naturally free. You know, and you know, free. gluten free too. Yes. You know, like we were talking about early on the show, and that's so important these days, is that people just have that intolerance to gluten. That's very true. And our chili and our queso are also gluten free. Unbelievable. So, what do we have, Shirley? We have got five flavors we've got pork, we've got beef, chicken tamales, black bean, and wow. they're, they're vegan, and we've got spinach with cheese for the vegetarians. Unbelievable. Now, should I try one? I mean, you definitely I'd like to, to try that. them all, but we, I'm just trying to, to gather right. my thoughts and say which one can I taste without making a mess all over me. All right, Joe, how about a black bean? I got one right here in the I'm middle of the I'm all black pot. bean for you. This is wonderful. Now, is there Would any you like me right... like take the corn husk off? Because that's, that's yeah, the okay. right way to eat it, Joe. You no, know, I did one show one time where I left the, the husk on because I've seen it that way done in Mexico. Well, you wouldn't believe every holiday season we get a phone call and they'll say, you know, your tamales taste absolutely wonderful, but they're a little chewy. Really? And we say, did you take the husk off? Yeah, did you off? take the husk off? No. <laughs> How could you eat the husk? I mean, that's like... No, well, you can't. That's like eating hay. That's exactly right. How about some chili and queso? Yeah, I would definitely... We lose. have mixed our chili and our queso together for this, and it wow. makes a wonderful tamale sauce and also a wonderful nacho sauce. Unbelievable. Try that, Let's Joe. see what we have. It's going to be hot, so be careful. Oh, yeah, I love it hot. Mm. Wow. Yeah. I gotta say, you know, your tamales are definitely out of this world, and it's it's really tough to find a good chili. You put them both together, and we got a marriage made in heaven. Yeah, I agree with you, and you know they both come in boiling bags now, so it makes it real easy. Oh, to so eat. in other words, you just take the bag out and just put and it in drop there. Drop it in the boiling water. You can go from the freezer to your table. Now you know, in talking about twenty minutes. In twenty minutes, that's it. That's it. Now the tamales itself is—is is it a homemade recipe? Is it something that you've been it, doing for a while? It is a homemade recipe. Back in the '80s, the whole idea was to come up with a healthy alternative for the traditional tamale. Mm. Wanted it to taste really good, but not have lard. We, oh. used, we used vegetable shortening back in oh, those days, and when trans fats became a real issue in the health industry, yeah, it did. Yeah. We switched to an oil. So now our tamales are. No trans fats. Well, I love it, Shirley, and I look forward to trying all your wonderful flavors. Thank Thanks you, for being Joe. on the show. Pleasure. Thanks for well, having me. We're not me. finished yet because I'm still hungry. Let's head back over to the barbecue and eat. Taste this. That's right, everyone. Here in Texas, we do it big. I'm here with Chef Gerald today, and he's going to show you how it's done. Are y'all ready for some Texas barbecue? Woo! Well, the event has begun, and we're here with Chef Jerry to go over some of the wonderful treats that we're going to be cooking at this Texas barbecue, right? Right. People do it different in Texas? Uh, oh, we do it big in Texas, and we're about to show you how it's done. What Are do you, you got? ready, Joe? I'm ready. Joe, look at these pork ribs. Nice, right? What I'm going to go in with is an awesome rub. I'm going to put a little black pepper across the top. A little black pepper. Looks good already. All right. And you want to make sure... It's Texas style, so we need some black pepper on it. And, that, and that's a Texas style. That's well, a Texas pepper. style. And then we want to make sure it's covered. Nice. Now this is considered a dry rub, right? This is considered a dry rub, and that's the way it should be done, just like in Texas. And Are then we, we go with a season all over the top oh, of it. We're cooking here in Texas now. I'm we're cooking. telling you. Then you want to make sure it's nice, nice. <laughs> then you want to flip it over. You want to do the back side. Both sides and all this love and rubbing. Both sides, and you want to make sure your meat is rubbed good. 
Because let me tell you something, in Texas we do it big. Do it big. And this is how we do it, big. Are you nice. ready? And I'm gonna this goes hand right this on the grill. Right on the grill, right Cut now. Cut me a slice, sir. my brother. Here we go. All Chef right. Richard, take it away. There you go, Chef. Put that baby on the grill. Don't be so mean. What do we got next? Next, we're gonna baste these chicken. I'm gonna put two of these chickens right in here. Not these one, but two. Not one, but two. And I'm gonna take some of our special barbecue sauce. Wow. All and right, I'm just gonna go over the top. So is it safe to say this is a marinade? This is a marinade. And we could use it pretty much for anything, tastes great with anything, and it's awesome. It's Texas big, I gotta it's say. Texas. All right, so this is an example of our Texas chicken breast that's going right over there in the that's grill. Chef, right. you ready for this chicken? I Chef am. Richard? He's ready. He's ready for this chicken. He's ready for this chicken. All right, give him the chicken. I said, we're smoking here, we're cooking. Next, we got steak. Beautiful looking steak. I love it. Looks good. Awesome. Look at the marbling. This is Texas Prime right Texas here. Texas Prime right here. Texas Woo! Prime. And with prime steak, you want to do prime things. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do another dry rub. Now, this is another dry on the steak. On the steak. Now, one more time in Texas, do they do it big or small? We do it big in Texas. Let All right, me there's tell no you. joke about that. Dry rub going down with the salt. Salt? Looking good. And black pepper. Black pepper, you got it all going on here. Yep. And you know what? I'm gonna hit it up. I'm gonna change up a little bit with some of the marinade. Why? Because this stuff is proven to be really, really good today. All right. Let's so I'm go. gonna put some over he's the top. He's changing of that. it up, folks. He's changing I'm it changing up. Changing it up. Normally he's got a routine, but today it's changed. I see you rubbing it all over that. Oh yeah. This is wow. a lot of love right here. And we're going to hand that right over to Chef Richard, and he's going to put it on the grill right Chef, now. Chef, you ready for the steaks? I'm ready. He's ready for the steaks. Let's go. we got to get some smoke in this baby here. What is this thing here? This is what we call a Texas hamburger. Now, of course. Because it's big. It's big, like Texas. Now, what, what I'm going to do is something totally unique. I'm gonna go in with the Worcestershire He's sauce. He's going in with Worcestershire sauce. Steak what is that? sauce. Steak sauce. Man, this looks like a hamburger. I'm telling you. We got bread for this? Some more, once again. I'm gonna use some of this, because this is shown to be really, really good today. And I'm gonna go in with some of that. You're feeling it. So this is kind of like a wet type of... Uh, wet. So in other words, you're not taking no hamburgers out of a box. No, we ain't taking no hamburgers out of the box. We don't do so that So your hamburgers Texas. are not frozen. No, our hamburgers are all prime all the time. Now, what'd you put in here? Some black pepper? Yeah. Black pepper, salt, Worcestershire sauce. I see it. I love it. Now, I'm gonna the take whole thing is I'm get your hands in there dirty? You got to get your hands in there. Now, if you weren't wearing any, like, gloves, would you use your feet? Like the old-time Italians with the wine. I don't know. Maybe you'd use your feet, but I wouldn't. I'd go ahead and get a pair of uh, tongs or a spatula, and I'm going to make this burger. Now, that's that's a big, hefty portion. No, that's a big, hefty that's a big portion. Hefty. Why? Because in Texas, we do it how big? Big. Real we big. We do it real big. We're in Texas. You got to do it big. Chef, you ready for the burger? We're ready for that. He's Texas ready for the burger. burger. Pass him the burger. Wow. Is that it? That's it. Look at it. He slaps it. Gets it down in there. Love it. Look at that. That's barbecue. Only in Texas. Yeah, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. Well, Gerald, I know when I'm looking for good Texas food, I'm coming here to Texas. Meet up with my boy, Chef Gerald, right here. And that's how we do it. That's it. Big, Big in, Texas. in Texas. 
So I'm here with Todd Karp. Todd, how are you? How you doing, Joe? So now a little bit about tonight. We have uh, people from all walks of life coming mm -hmm. in to enjoy. Our, our distributor from mm -hmm. Texas, our retail partners, and of course, the gentleman here, which is my team, marketing team, and Excellent. sales. Yep. Excellent. Well, we got a lot of great people coming in, and it's our job to feed them right and make them feel good. And, you know, we picked the theme today of, of a tailgate, right? Absolutely. Relaxful. And, and very casual. That. Very informal, yeah. very casual. Have people come in, enjoy themselves, just eat great food, your delights, Chef Joe. Thank you. Drink great beverages, and just all out fun. Excellent. Todd Carp here. Todd, thank you so thank much. You, and we're really looking Appreciate forward it. to the event. More on the food and action coming straight away, so don't go anywhere. Taste this. Everyone knows that great food and entertainment go hand in hand. While well, you can't have great food and poor entertainment, tonight we have the best of entertainment. Burn the bridge, bet the sword, baby's coming home no more. Not for the life of me. Break the lock, post my bail, done my time, I'm out of jail. Not for the Well, welcome to another fun-filled episode of Taste This TV. I'm your host, Chef Joe Seminero. We got some good things going on today. We got a few winners. Um, you know, whenever we talk about meatloaf, uh, over the years, I've sort of built a meatloaf around my personal liking. You know, I like 90% uh, lean beef, although um, some fat is good. Uh, you know, we could talk about that on another show, but that's preferably what I like to use with this dish, only because... What I'm doing with the meatloaf is taking it and I'm band-aiding it, or, or I should say, uh, wrapping it with, with bacon, apple smoked bacon. And as you know, from eating bacon, it's a tremendous amount of, of grease, but it's also flavor. That flavor is going to actually coat the top of the meatloaf, which is why so many people wrap not only meatloaf in bacon, but pork chops, which tend to be very dry. Now wrapped in bacon can be this succulent treat, right? So we're going to get started with that today. I'm going to throw my classic egg in there, hard-boiled egg into the center because I always think that's a nice, flavorful way to, uh, to eat meatloaf. Breaks up some of the fat as well. And um, we're going to make a little uh, pan gravy out of that as well. And uh, we're going to get busy cooking, you know, and talking about some products that we're going to be working with today. Uh, we're definitely going to be uh, working with this uh, official state pastry, Kringle. Now, if you haven't heard about Kringle... Uh, incredible product. Uh, ever since I was a kid, I remember my family always getting this shipped uh, to us here in New York, which is always like a, a holiday staple. You know, I can remember as a kid, the Kringle would be uh, at the Christmas table and uh, nice festive days back then as well. So we're going to be talking about that product, uh, which is just basically eating as it is right out of the box. But it's really good because the way they ship it, the way they package it, and the flavor is just incredible. So if you've never tasted a Kringle in your life, uh, definitely check that one out. Um, you know, I'm not going to be using uh, this almond butter today, but Aldrin Brothers, who are definitely friends of Taste This TV, uh, they came out with a new almond butter, and this is their crunchy, crunchy almond butter, and they also have the creamy uh, butter as well. And this has got some really good flavor. You know, you talk about what you'd be in a peanut butter, just, you know, peanut butter. They've added a little bit of honey and coconut oil to really uh, take it to the next level. You know, to really add a little fat content in this as well, which, which tends to be better with the flavor and, and of course, your overall health. Uh, a lot of people... You know, when I say fat, they're like, oh, fat, high calories, low calories. Realistically, if you don't have the proper amount of fat, your brain isn't getting the nutrition that it, that it needs because your brain is pretty much all made up of fat and it, and it survives on uh, being able to, to eat fat such as oils and avocados and nuts. Uh, we need that kind of stuff. So when people say I'm on a low-fat diet, uh, half the time I don't think they know what they're talking about. So, okay, Almond Butter, Aldrin Brothers, check them out. So... Just a little bit of the process that we're going to get started today, folks. We're going to be taking this uh, turkey ground beef. Today I'm going to be using turkey. Uh, and I don't use the white meat from the turkey breast. I tend to use the dark just because I think it's a lot better. Uh, it's more flavorful and it's got a little fat in there too, which your body needs. Uh, but it's not going to go to the hips. It's not that kind of a fat. So 
we got that. We got a little mixture that we're going to be doing that as well. We're going to, again, wrap it with the bacon, bacon in the oven. We got this pretty cool ceramic thing that I fell in love with when I cooked the whole chicken. I'm now going to cook the, um, the, the meatloaf in that as well. We're going to take that out. We're going to make a pan gravy. And, of course, at the end, we're going to, we're going to start cutting into our Danish here and, and, and see what the hype is about. I already know what the hype is about. I'm trying to get you hooked. Don't forget that Taste This TV, uh, I've rolled out with our complete weight loss program that I want everyone to check out. Um, you'll find it on the page and you can go to the website and sign up. Uh, really taking weight loss to the next level. But I think we got enough info that we're going to get started now, right? Now we're going to walk over to some of our ingredients. Now we have some gluten-free breadcrumbs and we followed some beef jus. We have some bacon. And we have Mike D's big barbecue sauce we're going to be using. Our Miroqua vegetables. We have some microgreens. Uh, can't forget our sunflower seeds, our eggs, and of course our spices. So now that we got all our ingredients, let's talk about what's going into the dish. Now we have some ground turkey. Now I'm not using the white meat turkey, but then we have this apparatus that we're going to be cooking in. So uh, what we're going to do is kind of marry everything. As you notice, we got our microgreens going on too, but we're going to start off by taking some eggs, putting it in the ground turkey. I tend to like to use the ground just because it's, uh, it's so much more uh, flavorful. Add your spices, your breadcrumbs, your salt, a little dab of the jus, and of course you can't forget uh, first cold pressed olive oil and mix. Now be sure you're mixing this meatloaf really good to ensure that you're getting all the flavors and seasoning in there. Continue to mix until you form a bowl, uh, like a big bowl I should say. And then you're going to plop the ball right down into our pot. And you're just going to make kind of an indentation here. This is going to be where the hard boiled egg, remember the already cooked egg, will sit inside of the meatloaf. So we're going to add our eggs. Now three will do it. And then we just fold it up. And just make sure that you're completely submerging the egg in the meatloaf because you don't want a hard crusty egg baking into the oven. We'll firm the sides, we'll shape it nice. We'll throw a little bit of a combination of pumpkin seeds and the sunflower seeds on top. And then we're taking our bacon strip by strip and layering over it. You know, you want to make sure that there's kind of a half of bacon kind of room to, uh, to mold this over. So just keep going strip after strip. And then when you get all the bacon on, you want to tuck it in like you're tucking a nice little infant to bed, right? So you want to make sure you're getting all that uh, serious bacon flavor on there, which is also great. And if it doesn't stop there, we're going to put some seasoning on the top. I got a little dry basil. And what we're going to do is add some cold pressed olive oil on top and then bacon in the oven, 375 degrees, uh, probably for about 45 minutes. Next, we're going to get started on our gravy. Now, as you notice, we have our mirepoix here. We're sauteing it just until all of the sugars kind of get released from the vegetables. And that's what we're looking for, a light saute. Uh, and then we're going to add some seasoning in there. And then we're going to take some of this gluten-free flour that I have. I, I chose to use gluten-free flour here today, folks, just because I, um, I am gluten-free most of the time, or I try to be 100% of the time. And uh, this will help thicken it up. Uh, and you don't need to use white flour. So keep stirring that in after you have your seasoning and then you want to throw your beef jus. Now you can do half chicken stock, half beef, it's fine. We're going to add that in, bring that baby to a boil. And when it starts to boil, you're going to notice it's going to thicken up. And that's a sign that we're going to actually, uh, when it's done thickening, we're just going to lower the heat and, and kind of take it off. But if you notice now, it's getting nice and thick. And the flavors are just incredible. I throw a little microgreens in there for a little color, added flavor. I like that kind of garden flavor in, in, in my uh, gravies and sauces. And they're just going to take it off the flame. Now, at the end of the meal, don't forget about our Danish Kringles. Now, we talked about that. This is an incredible product. Um, grew up eating this stuff, and they get shipped right to your door. Easy to open. I always love the package. This is their sea salt caramel. Um, and then really just take this baby out. It's always packaged nicely. This way it doesn't get, you know, crashed or anything. With a sharp knife, I like to go around the edges, just pull the top off and then underneath. 
And that's it, cut it to perfection. The only thing left for this baby to do is be consumed. All right, so now our meatloaf is ready. As you can see, it looks incredible. Um, and you can slice it, leave it whole, take pictures, and make it last as long as you can, but I'm gonna eat this baby. And we can't forget that we're garnishing the top with our incredible microgreens. Look at how these babies grew. So this is day eight, and this baby has flourished. You know, could you imagine like 10 of these things on your rooftop, the 21st floor in New York City? Really good stuff, organic. I love it, look at this. Really, really is coming up nicely. So we use this not only as a garnish, but of course, uh, we're gonna eat it. Well, thank you for watching this on the fun-filled episode of Taste This TV. I'm your host, Chef Joseph Manera. Remember, there are no rules in cooking, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, Taste This.